Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we gather in the Holy Church on the week following Pentecost, and we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. This is not a mistake. This is not one of those weeks that just had to be filled with something, and therefore the Father said, well, let's just put All Saints there in honor of this. In fact, the reason we celebrate All Saints today is a reflection of last week's Feast of Pentecost. Right? At Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Trinity. We see the Holy Spirit work in the world. And today, we glorify those who have glorified God, the Holy Trinity. Now, this began mostly as a feast of the martyrs. And really, if you examine uh, the divine service, uh, those who were able to be here last night or who were listening on the live stream, you will hear a lot about the martyrs in this feast. It's really unquestionable that this is a feast of the martyrs, but it's also a feast of all of those who have glorified God, the Holy Trinity. This is important for us, brothers and sisters. This is kind of the end of a long cycle, almost one-third of the year, that began already with Zacchaeus Sunday, all those weeks ago. And we go through the entirety of Great Lent, we prepare ourselves for the Lord's glorious resurrection. We worship his resurrection, we bid him farewell as it is from the earth uh, as he rises to heaven, we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, and now we mark the feast of all saints. Tomorrow we begin a Lenten period, which is rather short this year and varies in length because it starts always the Monday after All Saints. All Saints Sunday is attached to Pascha, so it can be early, it can be late, it just depends on Pascha. So if Pascha is early, the feast, the fast is long. If Pascha is late, like this year, the fast is very short. But nonetheless, it's important for us to examine those saints who have come before us and try to put into use the important lessons that they have taught us. Today we don't really talk about theologians. We don't really talk about those who wrote or taught about God, at least in an academic way. Although those are important saints of the church, and we do give them plenty of attention at other times of the year. But really, this feast, brothers and sisters, if you examine it, is a feast of, as I said, martyrs, and also of those who struggled in the monastic life, and those who struggled outside of the monastic life, but those who taught with their deeds, not so much with their words. This, I think, is really important for us as we stand on the precipice of another fasting period of the church. To reflect on our own lives, how has it been since Pascha? Everyone did well during Great Lent. We generally do thank God. We can sort of put everything aside and we are able to struggle to obtain the virtues, at least some of them, and hopefully to carry some of them through all of the way to this point. But perhaps we haven't done as well as we had hoped. Or perhaps we did well, but then things didn't go so well over time. In any case, brothers and sisters, the Holy Church, as a loving mother, provides us yet another opportunity to reflect, another opportunity to consider our spiritual lives. And because we celebrate today the Feast of All Saints, we should reflect based on their lives. Now, does that mean that all of us will immediately leave from here and go to the desert and live a solitary life? Probably not. Does that mean that all of us will go to some place like Saudi Arabia where you can be killed for being a Christian and give ourselves up as martyrs for the faith? Probably not. But if we reflect just a little bit and consider what does that word martyr mean, then maybe we can really emulate those that we are mostly celebrating today. Martyr, our curious, is witness. Witness. Someone who witnesses, in this case, for Christ. And I think we can well reflect in our own lives and consider how are we doing in witnessing for Christ. Knowing that no one is holding a sword over our neck and asking us if we believe. But the world nonetheless is challenging us. And it's very important for us to consider those who came before, those martyrs, 
who showed us the way to the heavenly kingdom and how they live. They were not afraid of death. Can we at least not be afraid of going against the tide of the world? It does not mean that we need to make a big deal about this, that we need to go out and make a lot of noise, that we need to be a big distraction. But when the Lord gives us the opportunity to witness for Him, brothers and sisters, let's decide already today we won't turn away. When the Lord gives us the opportunity to be a Christian in front of someone else, not in a proud way, but in an unavoidable way, let's decide now that we will not turn away. When the Lord gives us an opportunity to witness to Him, let's decide now that we will not turn away. And if we decide that, brothers and sisters, now, because when the time comes, it's we are so well trained to turn away and pretend that we are not Christians, except when we are around other Christians, we very quickly will turn away. So we need to train ourselves. We need to strengthen ourselves in prayer. And we need to redouble our efforts to engage with God's grace, mostly through partaking of the Holy Mysteries. And what a lovely time to do that during a Lenten period, when there are more opportunities to be in church, and there are more opportunities to put aside the worldly life and pursue the spiritual. Brothers and sisters, let us thank God that we have come to this time, that we have been able to celebrate the Feast of All Saints, which is a universal feast of the church. In every Orthodox church in the world today, the celebration of All Saints is being held. We participate, brothers and sisters, when we are here in the church. But let us take the grace that we find here in God's house and let us take it out into the world with us. If we can be a shining light of love of Christ, then that light will attract others. Not to us, we don't need disciples, but to Christ. Who also does not so much need disciples, but gives man an opportunity to be his disciple for man's salvation. Brothers and sisters, we've been given the pearl of great price. Let's decide today that we are not going to hide it, that we are going to live openly with that pearl, as we may say, around our chest or in our hand, so that we can be a shining light to others that will then come to Christ. Just as the martyrs in their great struggle were a shining light that brought mothers to Christ, often even those who were torturing and killing them because of their witness came to Christ. You aren't being challenged in that way. You are being challenged in a softer way. But nonetheless, let us rise up, brothers and sisters, strengthen ourselves with prayer, and meet the challenge. May the Lord grant this to all of us. Amen. Mm -hmm.